So hey guys and I am going to be giving you some advice on how to aim for a grade 9 in your GCSE maths today because obviously this is something that I get asked about quite a lot so I thought you guys might find it helpful more in this format. So my first and number one piece of advice is always to put 100% effort into all of your homeworks so as soon as you start your GCSE course in year 10 you need to keep on going with that effort all the way through the year because the homeworks are your first sort of indicator as to how well you understand the topic. So yeah, even if you find the answers online or however they give you the answers, then you can always make sure that you've got the answers right. So double check, triple check. And then if you don't get something right or you get something wrong, then make sure you ask for help. So obviously if you don't understand um, if you don't understand something in December of year 10, you think, oh, I've got a year and a half left, but your teacher might not cover that topic again until they go around to a revision in like April time. So you need to make sure that you are on point with that topic at each step of the way. You don't want to get to like April time like, oh my God, I've got all these things that I don't understand, obviously. So you need to make sure at each point you understand every single thing. Although, obviously, it's not going to mean that you don't get a grade 9 if you don't understand one thing. I never understood iteration. <clears throat> I've never understood iteration. I still don't understand iteration. And it is a main A-level course, so that's great. Yeah. But that, that's one thing that I didn't understand. It was like three marks in the exam or something like that. And it didn't matter. So, yeah, so don't be too scared or put off if you think, oh, God, I don't understand that one thing because it doesn't matter. If you don't understand that one thing, that is absolutely fine. So yeah, as I said, this is your opportunity to ask and make sure that you understand it whilst you have time because when it gets to around April time, you won't have that time. You will be rushed and you will be stressed. So I think as I've said in my uh, study with me is that I really recommend using Chegg. Chegg is an app and it's like Quizlet. So it's a flashcard app where you make your flashcards except it doesn't offer you the same games that Quizlet does. And I don't really like using the games anyway. So Chegg is more of an organized set for me. I find it easier to make the actual flashcards on Chegg. And that is what I've been using since year nine. So that is what I used in my GCSEs. Um, you may think, oh, it's maths, so I don't really need to use flashcards or things like that. But obviously, well, on the new GCSE maths spec, you have to know your formulas. You have to know them off by heart, including the quadratic and all of the shapes. So like a volume of the sphere and things like that. You need to know those off by heart. So check is useful for all of those things. And then you also have all the other uh, revision techniques like uh, mind maps and post-it notes. So... Yeah, I used my post-it notes as these ones on the door. They are all for maths. Some of them are still from GCSE because they're still relevant in my A-level spec, but some of them are also now A-level content. So I did use this method for my GCSEs and it obviously helped me. So whilst I was brushing my hair in the morning, I could look at my door and see the quadratic formula. So I constantly saw it in my face and I constantly was able to remember it. So another revision technique, which is probably the most important one anybody will ever tell you is past papers. One thing I realized, because obviously when I was doing the, I was the first year through the new a -Lil, I was the first year through the new GCSE spec. So I thought, oh my gosh, I'm on the new spec. I live in so much harder than it used to be. And then I realized when I, my teacher gave me loads of past papers, that the past papers were actually from the old spec. So it's actually not that much different. I didn't actually notice a difference that much in the in the intensity of the content between the old spec papers and the new actual papers. So yeah, it's completely fine to download and print off some old spec papers as long as it's your exam board and use them as revision. Just do as many as you can, but obviously the new spec ones are more tailored to you. So those are the best ones to use, but your school will probably be using them at mocks, as mocks at the minute. And yeah, past papers are also helpful even if you're just copying the mark scheme. You don't have to use them as mocks every time. You can just have the mark scheme and literally it would just be copying it out word for word and it will still go into your brain. You will understand it more even if you don't feel like you do afterwards. I remember there was a certain thing, I think it was to do with graphs at GCSE and I just didn't understand the method of it. 
So I copied the marks scheme out again and again and again. And even though I didn't understand it, I learned how to do it. So I knew how to do it and I got those marks. But obviously not understanding it is not the best way to go, but it's more ideal than not doing anything at all. Yeah, and like I said, with past papers, you need to use your mocks wisely. So past papers, you can just use mark scheme, but mocks, you need to put 100% effort into them and they will be your best indicator as to what grade you're working at. And if in your year 11 marks you only get a 5 and you're still wanting a 9, you can absolutely pull it back. Your teachers will be marking your, your papers harshly because they don't want you to be disappointed in the exam if something goes horribly wrong. So you are more likely to do well in your actual exam than in your mocks. So it's absolutely fine. So then backtracking to what I said about homework, what I personally did in all of my homeworks was I always wrote out the question, then wrote out the working out and then the answer. So when I went back to revising it, I covered up the answer and the working out, read the question, see if I could still do it, checked it out with my old working out and my answer. And if it was right, then I could still do that topic. Whereas people who just do the homework, do the working out and write the answer, they don't have the question when they revise. So I don't understand how people can revise using the books because you, you, you don't know what that question, what the answer is relevant to. So yeah, that is my advice and it does take a long time to write the questions out, I know, but I don't know how I would have revised without that. It is 100% the best thing to do, especially in year 10 when you haven't really done any mocks yet. So yeah, like I said, just cover the answer, see if you can still do it and then uncover the answer, the same as the primary school spelling test. And in terms of the actual exam, you need to make sure you have good clarity. Your handwriting needs to be legible and you need to try and make sure, from what my teacher told me, is to need to make sure that the equal sign stays in line when you're doing equations. Like when you're solving algebra, you do like 5x equals 10, so then um, x equals 2 and the equals needs to be in line. So step by step marking and you get your method marks more easily. If it's easier for the examiner to see what you've done and where you've done it, you'll be guaranteed those marks. And answer all questions uh, if you can, because you know how sometimes you'll get like question five part A, question five part B, and then in question B you have to use your answer to part A. And if you can't do part A, then you go, oh my God, what am I supposed to do now? Because I can't do part B. Well, you can get error carried forward marks. So even if you can't do part A at all, put a random number down as part A and then use that in part B. And then even if your answer for B is completely wrong because your answer for A is completely wrong, you would still get the method marks because if your working out is correct, then you can get those marks, even if the numbers are wrong. So yeah, when it does come down to the exams, every mark matters. You don't want to be one mark below the boundary do you and for it to be that of one mark if you'd have just tried but yeah in terms of also that if you don't understand the question move on and come back to it don't get stuck on it and get really agitated and frantic about it because the most important thing to do is to stay calm likewise in the paper for different examples they are lined differently but you should notice that there are always sort of border around the paper like a box around the edge and it might say in the middle like please do not write in here that is because from what i've been told i'm only repeating what i've been told is that the exam paper is going to a scanner and then the examiners see the exam paper on their computer screen and they mark it digitally so if you wrote outside that line like you were just doing some working out with algebra and you just went outside the line that number would be cut off and the examiner won't be able to see that you've done that so there is the chance that it may not be marked if you go outside those lines. I know with OCR and biology, I went outside the lines because the lines weren't there. They were like at the corners. So in the next exam, I drew the lines in myself. Ridiculous. But yeah, in the same sense, if you do accidentally go outside the lines, don't get too panicked about it because yes, there is the chance that it might not be marked, but there is also the chance that the exam board will recognise that you have gone outside the lines. And in that case, they send it off physically to the examiner so then they can mark it in person and they see everything. But like I said, that is not guaranteed. You need to, you need to remember to state your units and your um, significant figures. If it states in the question specific number of significant figures, um, highlight it or underline it. I can't remember whether you can use highlighters or not. I think I used a highlighter whether I was allowed or not, I don't care. I used a highlighter. So if it said significant figures, I'd remember to do that. 
in units, you always remember maths, you always need to check your units. If it's in meters and you need it in centimeters, that is a fatal mistake, isn't it? You know, every time, so annoyed. So definitely check that. And likewise, you need to read the question carefully. So you can always get your method marks, so you need to show all working out, and you also need to use the full values. Don't use the rounded values. So you need to use the full values, otherwise your rounded value at the end of that other method can be wrong if you use the rounded value. So you need to remember to use the full value, even if that's a fraction, just put the fraction in it, put brackets around it and it'll be absolutely fine. And then finally, you need to check the answers at the end. You need to proofread and I go, oh God, isn't it so hard? It's like when you finally get to the end of your paper and you're like, thank God I've actually finished my exam now. And you think, God, I need to check my answers. I just can't be bothered, I'm finished now. And you get into that mindset that it's horrible. So you definitely need to make sure that you have that energy and you need to check them. You need to force yourself to check your answers because chances are you have made a stupid mistake and that can be fatal in the end. Also, if you go into an exam knowing that you don't know things, like if you go into the exam knowing that you don't know the cosine formula, then that is on your own head. So obviously you need to use your flashcards, you need to make sure you know them. But if you are going into that exam knowing you don't know it, then that is putting you at risk. I actually also need to add in about maths, it's especially if you do LXL, then I 100% recommend, recommend these revision guides. We didn't get given these in our school, we got given the CGP ones, and I personally bought these out of my own money, in my own time, and this was so much better than CGP in my opinion. So yeah, always look at your exam board's textbooks, and they will help you very much and check the specifications. Uh, be prepared, being prepared will, should keep you calm. Um, so you have your exam pencil case ready, have your calculator sorted out, your exam concessions if you're in a different room or you have extra time or you have a scribe or something like that. You need to make sure all of that is sorted and you know exactly where you need to be at what time. Have your hair tied back if it's long. Um, um, don't have a watch on because from my school has personally now banned all watches and exams even just an analogue watch you're not allowed to make exams anymore and I'm pretty sure every single school is starting to go the same way so you don't want to be in your exam and for the examiner to come over to you and tell you you, you can't have your watch on because it may shake you up in the exam and then that can put you off and that is the worst thing to happen so just make sure that there is a clock in the exam that you can see Ask the examiner if you can't see it to move it. I had to do that a few times in mine and it's absolutely fine. They are only there to help. They are also allowed to give you drinks of water if you would like it. So don't think that you are stuck in that position because your examiners are there to help. I mean invigilated, your invigilators are there to help. And then most importantly is try to stay calm. As I've said in all of my videos, I have these on my wrist. These always keep me calm. Maybe it's a placebo effect, I don't know, but it makes me feel better. So yes, I always advise having one of these or something else that you know keeps you calm. And most importantly, good luck guys. I wish you the very best of luck in these mocks that you're probably doing at the minute and overall in the end of your exams.